What up, what up, what up? Welcome to The Come Up, a business video podcast featuring Southwest Florida entrepreneurs. I'm Scrappy, and today our guest is John Garuti III. He's an expert and prolific at Babcock Ranch Realty, having sold over 50 pre-construction homes in the ranch. We're brought to you by Content With Teeth, my man Mike, a dynamic local content marketing agency aimed at helping you generate qualified leads, conversions, and brand awareness. They do it really big, just like this fat head behind me. So if you want to be our next guest, we'd love to have you on this podcast. Go ahead and hit me up on Instagram at HeyScrappy or Mike at 21,000. Just text him. John, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? It's great to see you. In preparing for this, I watched a tremendous amount of your videos. You're prolific when it comes to marketing. Thank you. It's uh, how I started my real estate business. Very cool. When did you start? Well, I actually got my first sale here in uh, August of 2020, so been doing real estate just under two years now. Oh, wow. So you're a total opportunist because this is a great time to get into the game. Yeah, well, I moved to Babcock Ranch at the end of 2019, and uh, I was the 347th homeowner here, according to my garbage man. <laughs> and uh, I just said, man, they're building 20,000 front doors here, so... Maybe if I get into real estate right about now, I, you know, it may work out and it sure has so far. Very smart. Very smart. I understand you're from New York. Originally from Queens. Yep. Born and okay. Raised. I'm from money making Manhattan. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> I'm from across the East river. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I'm from 58th and second. So I kind of know it pretty well. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in New York, what were you doing previous to realty? Well, in New York, my uh, father had a big manufacturing business in Queens. So I kind of grew up in that business. He started it with his father back in 1978. Uh, it was a pretty big business, did a, a little over $10 million a year in revenue. And uh, we, we actually manufactured right there in Queens and we delivered to all the mom and pop tile shops right there all throughout the city. So yeah, I kind of had a good business up, upbringing, just being involved in that from you know, summers in high schools and college. And then after college, I worked there full time until uh, we sold the business at the end of 2017. So you're crazy busy in New York City. What brought you to Babcock Ranch? It's a huge departure. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, my wife and I, we had just had our second kid there at the end of uh, 2017. And I worked for the people that I bought our business for a year. And they're a big French multinational company, huge, like billion dollar company. And I just, I wasn't really feeling that corporate culture. It wasn't, just, wasn't me. And uh, my wife, we had wanted to get out of New York for a while just to have more. You know, we had young kids and we were looking for greener pastures and uh, my wife wanted to move warm. And my family, we had been coming down to Naples for since like 2006. My parents bought their first condo. So I was always coming down here you know, two, three times a year to hang out. And we said, hell, hell, why not? Why not move to Florida? Let's try it How out. How did you discover Babcock Ranch? Just, I was living in Naples and, um, you know, we were, we didn't know where we wanted to move, what we wanted to do. And then we kept hearing about Babcock and uh, lo and behold, we, we came up here, I think the first time in January of 2019. And at the time it was, you know, barely anything here still, but we just kind of fell in love with the concept and everything that the town stood for with the sustainability and environmentalism. And uh, we just said, this is, this is the place for us to raise our family. So, you know, I had this great job in New York, you moved to Florida, but it's somewhat of a risk and sacrifice in becoming an entrepreneur. I mean, there's a lot of competition in real estate, a lot of realtors out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was the biggest risk I ever took in my life. And we moved here to Florida with no, no oh, idea wow. what we were going to do, man. It was, uh, you know, it was definitely a big risk. We had no jobs. My wife and I, we had two kids. I mean, I had enough money saved up to, to make that move, but yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely scary at first. So do you have a niche in Babcock Ranch? Yeah, I think I really have done well with the new construction and helping relocation buyers and um, my YouTube channel is really, I think, what's helped me connect with that audience because 
you, as you know, this is a huge relocation market, not only Florida, but Southwest Florida and people, you know, they've been hearing about Babcock Ranch from all over the country and they, they do their research now, like everybody does online today. And I've just been able to connect with a lot of people from all the helpful and useful videos I put out there. So I think if there's one niche that I've like really nailed down, it's yeah, those relocation, new construction buyers. Okay, yeah. Well, you're definitely ahead of the curve when it comes to social media and uh, marketing, video marketing. And um, one of the things I got from you and watching your videos is you seem really credible. You seem like a nice, warm guy. Is that true or is it just a big front? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm mean. I don't like people at all. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, with my videos, I, I just, I, that's me. What you see in those videos, that's me as a person. I, I'm very upfront about everything. I don't sugarcoat anything. I also don't hide anything. I've, I, I, you know, one thing I think people connect with is that I'm just, I'm putting it all out there, you know, and if you like that's it, well, let's talk. If not, hey, no worries. I'd that's rather great. you find out everything you need to know about this neighborhood to make a, an informed decision, whether it's to move here or not to move here. Got you. So. Got you. Tell us about Babcock Ranch. So uh, they're building 19,500 front doors here. Um, eventually, everything you'll ever need will be right here in town. So it's pretty exciting. They just passed about 2,000 home sales. So a lot more to come. Um, you know, probably another 20 years, I think, at least of building more houses here. And I heard some big things that are coming. Like we just finally got Publix. We're starting to get restaurants. I heard of like some hardware stores, some home goods style stores coming and the town just continues to develop. Like, uh, I think the one thing right now is the builders can't build the homes here fast enough. Well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, supply chain issues, getting materials and whatnot. Sure. It's taking builders longer to build. And, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, this place is going to be a full town one day. Um, it's really, what's nice is, uh, we've got so much, we're surrounded by 73,000 acres of nature preserve. Um, you know, the master plan is going to have like 50 miles of hiking trails and, oh, nice. you know, we have an awesome HOA that I think is very friendly. We get high speed gigabyte internet with our homes here. So it's really and you have solar like, power too, right? Yes. That's the other big pitch, right? Uh, we've got this huge solar array just North of the town and all the energy during the day is powered by that solar array. And then at night we switch to that big gas plant there on the Caloosahatchee <laughs> River. Tell us about the demographics. It's usually retirees, families, single people. You know, who's the majority of people moving to Babcock Ranch? You got the whole spectrum of people here. Um, that's what I love. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, married with young kids. So um, tons of families, tons of kids here and then you've got everything the empty nesters you've got the seasonal folks um you know when you look at like the golf course that's a more seasonal neighborhood but when you look at the rest of the neighborhoods in ba babcock ranch for the most part it's people that are living here year round working in southwest florida but you know we're still such a young town so that's the exciting thing like move you know even getting in here now you're still getting in at those nascent stages john you're a pioneer <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about different cities, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Naples, from a Punta Gorda perspective, you must be infusing their life tremendously from an economic standpoint. Yes, well, Punta Gorda, believe it or not, is now the seventh fastest growing city in the United States. And I think part of that is from the growth here in Babcock Ranch, because technically our dress is Punta Gorda. Sure, sure. What does 300 grand get me in Babcock Ranch today? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the prices have gone up. You could still get a condo on the golf course, but that comes with HO, higher HOA fees. So unless you love live, you know, love golf, I don't recommend buying there per se. Sure. Um, but yeah, right now, like the minimum price points are going to be like the low to mid threes. So you get up to 330, 350. Now we could look at some villas and then, you know, four low fours and up really. And, you know, they've got I've just sold the house here for 1.6 million. So you can go custom with builders on the big lake. Um, so there's there's everything, you know, every every, um, every quality level, every price point here, which is nice. I saw your video maybe 18 months ago and you said, we're approaching the million dollar mark. <laughs> and now you sold one for 1.6. 
Is that true? Like 18 months ago, I could have bought for under a million and sell that same house and flip it for 1.6 already? Yes. Um, that house, maybe not a million dollar house. I mean, that house, those couple bought for 1.3. And, um, you know, the million dollar homes didn't accelerate in value as fast as the smaller priced homes. So, for example, the first house I bought here, I paid three twenty five for. I just sold it for five sixty. So, wow. you know, my timing, I got very lucky, and I saw, you know, a lot of homes in that three hundred, like high twos, low threes, low fours, even. You know, a lot of those homes over since the start of twenty twenty one, they've gotten over eighty percent appreciation, which is just a, you know, a sign of like this crazy real estate market we've been living through here the last two years. It has been crazy. And, you know, with increased demand and less supply, you know, the rates are going up so high, the prices are going up. Do you recommend to people, you know, they have an opportunity to sell now, strike while the kettle is hot. You did so for $560,000, but then, you know, maybe you have multiple properties, but the average person, if they sell, they're going to be stuck with paying high rental rates, you know, given inflation. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, well, I think you kind of hit it there. Everybody's situation is unique, right? So one, one big objection right now is, oh, I'd love to sell, but if I sell, where do I go? If you're selling right now high, you're buying high. Right. So it really, it really comes down to your uh, situation. That's like the one thing I'm very keen on doing with all the clients I'm working with. Like, even if they're leaving town, like, let's talk about all these things because the more I know about you, the more I can help you. And yeah, a lot of people, um, I think one of the best things right now for people is like that move up, right? So if you mm -hmm. bought and you want a more expensive house or you want a bigger house because you have so much equity or you've gained so much equity with the increase in prices, the, probably the best thing you could be doing right now is moving up if you want to stay locally. You sound like a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm thinking to myself, it's going to peak at some point. Is this really the best time to buy? Yeah, um, you know, I think the I think the prices did peak already, but you know, real estate it takes six months for a real estate market to change. So I think we're starting to just see that shift. You're a chill dude from my perspective, but the thing is, I can feel your passion. I really respect and appreciate that about you. Thank you. I am passionate. I bet you know. I tell people this is the first thing I've done in my life that I actually really, really enjoy. So it's easy for me to get up every day nice. and work on marketing, work on videos and nice and, you know, helping people just makes it all that sweeter. So very nice. Finally, you're growing up in Queens, you're 12 years old. If you could give advice to that 12 year old self, what would it be? Yeah, I would have told myself, don't be such a hard ass, you know, <laughs> get yourself, get yourself some good mentors early on, some people that can teach you. Um, people who are doing what you want to do, right? You need to go to the people who have already been there to get that advice, get that mentorship, and don't ever stop learning. Um, and, you know, when I was younger, I was just, man, I, no lie, growing up in that family business, I think it was like a detriment in many ways because I had it too easy. I never had to like struggle. Um, and I think, um, you know, looking at how I want to raise my kids, like even though we have nice things now and stuff, I don't want them growing up like I did. I want them to struggle for the things that they want to have and, you know, tell them it's, you know, make it a priority for them that they got to earn the things they want. So sure. Sure. if I could go back in time and tell myself these things, like I would have, you know, I would have been doing this probably 50, 10 years ago. I would have started real estate 10 years ago, you sure. know, but I sure. was, I was stuck in the family business. So I was mm -hmm. kind of, hard to get out of that um, for many reasons, mainly emotional ties to the family and, you know. Sure, of course, of course. Um, and that's what makes it so much sweeter today, you know, because you appreciate it more. Yeah, I know. And that's the thing. I, I was very blessed and fortunate to grow up the way I did because, you know, all that growing up in the business, it did give me an amazing business background. I mean, I've got, I know how to do a lot of things. I know accounting, I know finance and for a lot of people starting a business, they got to learn all these other things on top of like the sales and marketing. So um, I did definitely get a good, good upraising in business being born into that family business. So it very has cool. been very beneficial now, now that I'm, you know, succeeding here in real estate. Very nice. You're JG3, John Garuti, the third. 
Do you want to give a shout out to EXP Realty? I've got to give a shout out to EXP because it's definitely the best platform for any real estate entrepreneur in the world. There's nothing like it. The founder, Glenn Sanford, he's amazing. He gave, he built the company the way real estate agents always wanted to build the company. So I'm going to be with this company for all my <laughs> life. I ain't changing. Don't other real estate agents don't call me up trying to recruit me because I'm in EXP forever. So, um, and any other real estate in entrepreneurs, I promise you, this is the company for you. Very cool. Very cool. This is the come up. It's a podcast, a video podcast featuring entrepreneurs throughout Southwest Florida. It's brought to you by Content With Teeth, a very dynamic, happening content marketing agency. Check them out. They're really, really good at what they do. And you can see this by this big fat head behind me. They're very, very big at what they do. John Garuti, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot today. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Scrappy.